Okay, it's Sunday morning again, and we're here at Calvary, and we're going to have Bible study time. Our Sunday school lesson this morning is out of this unit we started last week, How to Love Your Neighbor, and uh, last week we looked at Who is Your Neighbor, the story of the Good Samaritan. Today we look at What Does Love Look Like, and it's a very common um, chapter or, or popular chapter in Scripture because it's Paul's um, I guess you would say his definition or his treatise on what really is love. And as you remember from a few weeks ago, we kind of outlined 1 Corinthians and, and how Paul dealt with things in those first few chapters. He, he dealt with some um, factions and some problems uh, among the people, and then he dealt with um, um, some uh, immorality and dealt with marriage and things in some middle chapters, and then he went into um, uh, more of a definition of how does the church function and what is the church to be about. And uh, we even, as we were talking about spiritual gifts in the last unit, um, or about the Holy Spirit, and then we got to spiritual gifts in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. And so um, after he has said all that and he's done all that, then he, he says in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 31b, we would say, and yet I show you a more excellent way, or I show you a better way, or or a more perfect way, as some translate that. And what is the more perfect way? Well, he's going to spend the 13th chapter talking about um, favoring um, the gifts, and uh, or or what is it that's more important out of all of it. And, and so, what, what is it that really matters most? And that is, of course, we call 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. And so, it is love that really matters most. So, the um, uh, title of this lesson is, What Does the Love Look Like? In our um, um, leader's guide for our Sunday school, the writer there um, dealt with um, counterfeit. And, um, well, I think um, that's a... Uh, that's a good statement. How do we really know counterfeits? What do we know? Well, the, 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 the truth of all that is that you need to study the, the right thing so much that you know it. And if you know it, then the counterfeit shows up. You know what you're looking for. And, and the same is true with the love. If you meet something or, some, or you see something or you meet someone and um, they may have all the uh, outward qualities of, of being a loving, kind, compassionate, godly person. But we need to look for counterfeits, and we don't know what might be otherwise in that person. So so we just have to um, um, to make sure that we know what love really is. And Paul's going to tell us in this chapter. You know, uh, the writer of our commentary said, you know, in, the, in, in 65, the song was, What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love, and and then seventies, you know, the carpenters saying, uh, "Love will no." That was Captain Neil. Love will keep us together. Sorry, I wasn't the carpenter. I get my groups wrong. Uh, but you know, what is love? And uh, it's just a more than a strong emotion or a, or an affection. Um, it is um, it, it is a commitment. And and when we think about God kind of love, it is it is the kind of love that shows itself or expresses itself in valuing others. So um, that's what we have to do. And of course, our, our commentator writer also wrote that um, uh, he, he shared a little bit about, um, you might recall Jim Elliott and, and um, uh, those who were killed in, in Ecuador. They went there as missionaries. And, and then um, uh, Elizabeth Elliott, Jim's widow, and um, uh, Steve Saint, who was the son of uh, um, Rachel Saint, and um, they um, they went back and became missionaries there with the people who had um, killed their loved ones. And and uh, but the power of God is amazing, and and um, that's what love is about, isn't it? It is. So listen to what Paul said in um, the First Corinthians thirteen. He's speaking to the church at Corinth, and he's trying to help them figure out what really matters. And he says in verse 13, remember he said in, in a part of verse, or chapter 12, he said, if I, 
I want to show you a more excellent way. And so here's the more excellent way. It says, if I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions and if I give over my body in order to boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. And I remember when I was in seminary, um, we were going through this and Dr. Coble, uh, Dr. Bill Coble said, uh, no, no, guys, don't go out and preach this. How to be nothing in three easy verses, you know. And I think that's funny, but I was probably the only one in the room that chuckled. Uh, in other words, preach it as, you know, I am nothing unless I have love. Well, okay. So love must undergird everything that we do. And um, this is the more excellent way that Paul is telling them. He, he wants them to understand that, you know, they should seek the greater gifts is what he said in in um, um, chapter 12 that, that, you know, it's not, it's not the um, least gifts that are the more important, but it's the greater gifts that are more important. And he's trying to tell us that love is the greatest, that when we have that and we express it in our lives, that that's when we are um, really the, the most godly. So he says, you know, if I um, have a, uh, human or angelic tongues, but I don't have love. I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. He's basically saying, um, I, I'm just making noise or I'm just talking to hear myself talk. Uh, and uh, if I, you know, the angelic tongues, um, if there's no love involved, all I'm doing is just really making a, 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 a noise or maybe even a useful noise, but not much. Now that's why we're told to make a joyful noise unto the Lord because it's the joyful part that is expressed because of love in our hearts. And, um, and so then he said, if I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, uh, but I don't have love, then what do I have? And, and um, uh, you know, we can get into a lot of discussion about um, what kind of tongues was he talking about? Um, well, if we look at Acts chapter two and we see what happened on the day of Pentecost, we'll recognize that the tongues then uh, were languages, known languages that people could hear and understand and they heard and understood in their own language. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm not gonna get into that today. However, um, some people like to make uh, that the gift or they like to make that be the priority gift and and Paul is saying not so uh, the priority gift is still love and that's the one that we are to seek and so um, he talks about you know I might be able to speak in tongues I might be able to interpret tongues I might be able to do all these things uh, but if I don't have any love in my in my heart or if I'm not expressing self-sacrificial love the kind of love that God shows us then what do I got? You probably know that um, there are three main Greek words for love, eros, we, we get our word erotic from that. And, and surprisingly, that is not used anywhere in the New Testament. Uh, we get um, then the word, uh, the second word is phileo, and we get that a lot. You know, we talk about, you know, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, and, and um, um, we talk about brotherly love, the kind of family affectionate love. But, Agape is the greatest, and it is the God kind of love that is self-giving, self-sacrificing. It's no wonder that Christianity took that word and used it to express God's love for us, took the Greek word and used it because it does express those kind of things. And um, self-sacrificial love means I, I seek um, God's will and not my will. It is, it is up to me to trust him uh, rather than to trust myself. And, and the scriptures uh, bear evidence to that. So, and then Paul says in verse three, if I give away all my possessions, which is what, you know, we all have, we have to do is go back and read in the book of Acts and we see where they were sharing all things in common. They were giving away stuff. And he says, if I give over my body in order to boast, uh, in other words, if I sacrifice some way, somehow, um, uh, but if I don't have love, if 
I don't have the right motive, then I gain nothing. So then he, he talks about um, um, how, how important this is, really is if we're going to have not only love for our neighbor, but the right kind of love in our lives. So, so what does love really look like? Um, well, it, it, it's something. It's not nothing. You know, Paul says, I'm nothing if I don't have love. Uh, intermingled with all the things that God might allow or might gift me to be able to do. Okay, and then we get to verses 4 through 7. And it says, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not irritable, does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I hope that you know by now that what Paul was really giving there was um, not a description of love. Uh, he was really giving a description of Jesus Christ. He was really telling us who Jesus is. These are the things that you will see in the character of Jesus. Um, that, um, that all of these things, you know, he's patient. He was patient with the disciples. He's kind. He was kind with people, even though they were sinners. Um, it does not envy. Um, Jesus certainly had no envy of anyone. It's, it's, he's not, was not boastful. He was not arrogant. He was not rude. He was not self-seeking. Matter of fact, he was others seeking more than anything. Um, not irritable, doesn't keep a record of wrongs. <clears throat> As he hung on the cross, what did Jesus say? You know, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Um, love finds no joy in unrighteousness, uh, but it rejoices in the truth. And I, I believe it was really hard for Jesus to uh, to speak out against the Pharisees and and to um, uh, to speak in a way uh, that he had to sometimes harshly to to make them understand and know that that their kind of um, religion was unrighteous. And uh, he, he tried to share with them the truth, but uh, they didn't receive. But it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So to me, that is just a great, um, great picture of Jesus. I, I think about um, John the Baptist, and, and um, we, we read in the Gospels, uh, in, in the Gospel of John, where... John's disciples, um, they, um, they, they didn't like it or they seemed to be puzzled about the fact that uh, people were following Jesus more than they were following John. And um, uh, of course, John had made the statement about Jesus. He said, uh, uh, he said, among those born of women, well, Jesus said of John, among those born of women, no one is greater than John. But yet John wasn't envious of Jesus because he said um, when some of John's disciples uh, noted that they were going to Jesus and not John, John said um, that it was Jesus and it was the blessing of Jesus that made his joy complete. So he was blessed in the fact that people were following Jesus more than him. And then he added in um, John 3.30, he said, uh, he must increase, but I must decrease. And I want you to think about that a little bit because um, that's really what agape love is about. Um, you decreasing and God increasing in and through you. And, and I also would say, you know, I don't know what your life verse is or if you have a life verse or if you said, you know, this, this uh, speaks to me, I think this is me and um, I, I want to make this my life verse and pattern my life after this. Well, folks, that's a good one. Uh, it ought to be everybody's life verse, that he must increase, but I must decrease. Because um, that's really what we are called to do as we surrender to live the Christian life, that we would decrease, our will would decrease, and we would trust his will and allow the Spirit to lead us and guide us, and that that would increase more and more in our lives. So Jesus wasn't arrogant, he didn't brag, he, he, he was all those things that Paul said about love. And I, I think that's um, maybe not used at weddings <laughs> when, they, when they use 1 Corinthians 13. It's certainly not um, printed on plaques that you might even have one hanging in your home. I don't know. 
But to me, that's the reality of it. What Paul was saying was that, uh, first of all, you can have these other gifts, but if you don't have the right motive and your motive must be love, then it's nothing. And the best example for us to follow are these things, and every one of them was proven to us in the life of Christ. So um, I, I believe that's what, um, uh, what he is saying to them. You know, the Jews rejected Jesus. Um, other people rejected him through the years. But um, Jesus still loved them unconditionally. And then he finishes the chapter by saying, love never ends, beginning in verse 8. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come in. They will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, that's the key, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, I put away or put aside such childish things. For now, we see only a re as a reflection in a mirror, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully as I am known. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And um, some are saying today, even in our day, well, Jesus said eventually those things would die. Um, prophecy, it'll be gone. Um, tongues, it'll be gone. Knowledge, it'll be gone. Um, but notice he didn't say when, except for he put in when the perfect comes. And folks, the only perfect, I believe, will be when we stand before him in heaven for eternity to worship him. That's when the perfect will come. So are those things um, still happening? Well, they may not be happening much in our nation, but you don't have to go very far around the world to hear of miracles. You don't have to go very long, long far to hear about prophecies. Um, it's amazing to me how many people in India um, who are um, Buddhists and, and um, uh, Muslims who, who are, um, they have a dream and they have a vision. And out of the vision, Jesus comes to them and they are converted to Christianity. Um, so are people dreaming dreams still? Absolutely. Uh, are things like that going on? Yes, I believe it's still necessary. Um, but it's necessary for people who need to receive. It's necessary for people who need to hear. Uh, do we need tongues today? Um, I think if you have your own personal prayer language, you need to keep it to yourself. Um, because it's personal. It's not for the church. You need to keep it to yourself. Um, and, and that's a whole other topic. But um, he said, now we know in part, um, we, we do not see face to face. In other words, we don't see clearly. We haven't seen it as it really is, but one day we will. And he said, um, you know, I, when I was younger, I reasoned like a child, I thought like a child, I spoke like a child, I was a child. But when I became a man, I put away those things. And, and he's basically saying, at some point, you've got to settle it in your heart and know love is the greatest of all. And to love people. You know, the only thing going to heaven is people, folks. And to love people. How are you going to store up treasure in heaven if you don't love people? And so um, that is the greatest of all these things. You know, you can have all the knowledge. You can be a Bible scholar. You can be whatever. Uh, you can have all understanding, um, which I don't know anyone who does. But to have love matters most. Greatest of these. After faith, hope, and love, the greatest is love. Well, so what does it mean for us to do? Um, it means for us that we need to um, love others. We need to settle it in our heart. There is a God and I'm not him. And uh, that I need to um, s learn to sacrifice. I need to learn to surrender. Or I need to learn to put others first before me. If I really, really want to honor God and glorify him, that's how it gets done. So, all right. Next week. Oh, next week. Um, uh, I am not going to be here. And uh, I'm, I'm told I have to go on a sabbatical or something like that. Uh, I'm just joking about it. But, 
but I have to get away, and I probably do. Uh, and so, um, for the next few weeks, um, I'm probably not gonna be making any videos, or if I do, uh, you'll just have to be subscribed and get in it, you know, get the little ding, you know, click the bell, it'll ding when I make a new one. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so you're probably not gonna get any Sunday school lessons, you're not gonna get any prayer meetings, you're not gonna get any uh, Sunday morning worships uh, because I'm gonna take some time away and we're gonna hope that's valuable for all of us. All right, so I'll see you when I see you. God bless you. Bye-bye.